Hello guys, today you will continue the mini-series of review of School Management System School. This is the video number three. If you missed the first ones, the playlist to all the videos will be in the description below. And topic of today is roles and permissions. And this project uses Spotty Laravel permission package for permissions and a few things on top of that like policies and extra stuff for super admin. So let's take a look at all of that and see how it works. So first, after installing the Laravel permission, of course, you need to get the permissions to the database somehow and then assign roles or abilities to users. So in the user model, it uses has roles here. Then when seeding the users, there's user seeder. It creates, for example, admin user and then assign role admin. Another user, assign role teacher. So that's how roles are assigned to users. But then permissions are kind of the third level of all of that. And there is a permission seeder seeding a lot of permissions. So for example, for class groups, for permissions like create, read, update, and delete, like a typical CRUD for all the entities. And then at the end of all of that, at the end of the permission seeder, we have this. We get the role admin from the database and we set the permissions for the admin, including those created here above in the same file. Then the same thing for teacher and for student and for parent. So this is how roles and permissions are set in the database. Now, how do we check those? And this is an interesting kind of a trick. There is authorized resource in most of the constructors of the controllers. Authorized resource, and I have a separate video on that and I'll link that in the description below. It allows you to set authorized resource once per controller if your controller follows a typical resourceful controller routing, like create, store, update, destroy, index, and all of that. So you authorize resource model with parameter of academic year. And then you don't need to check authorization like user can or this authorize in each method separately. Instead, you have policies for that. So if we open, for example, academic year policy, there is a policy file for that. Here's where we meet all the permissions that are set from the seeders. So view any of the academic years we check the ability for that. In fact, I would shorten it to just return without the if. So return user can, it would return true or false. So I would shorten that to this. And then in other methods view, you may also set true or false depending on those abilities checked by spicy permission package. Here also it checks for school ID as another check in the policy. But generally you use the policy, maybe not all the methods are filled because you don't check all of them and you don't have all the methods in the controller in a specific controller. But this is the general logic, authorized resource and then policies corresponding to the methods. Except if you have more methods in the controller, so create, store, show, edit, update and destroy are typical resource controllers. But then you have this set academic year. And then in addition to authorize resource, then you have another check this authorize. And this is the it's called ability or permission. So if we search for set academic year in the whole project, we have a specific policy method of academic year policy related to that. So that's if you have additional policies, additional rules, additional methods in your controller. And finally, there's kind of a trick to override any of that with super admin role. So for example, in the permission, they have user first or create with super admin and assign role super admin, which is fine. But then how to perform the check that super admin has access to anything, whatever new feature you add in the future. For that, the trick is in app service provider, for example, have this gate after, which means after all the gates are checked and all the rules are passed or failed, then if the user has role of super admin, you return true no matter what. I think it's a pretty cool trick. So this is a quick review how roles and permissions work in the school management software project. This was video number three of review on this project. There are two more videos ahead. So tomorrow we will continue with another topic. Stay tuned, subscribe to the channel.